This is the welding process overview for air carbon arc gouging process. This is for non-welders. Anybody that's a welder knows enough to keep away from this process if at all possible. If you're one of those people that really likes smoke, fire, and poison arrows falling from the sky in some kind of Old Testament style end of the world scenario, then this is your process. You really want to be involved in this if you really like smoke, fire, and noise. Um, in the past, this presentation has been given to coworkers of mine who were mechanical, structural, civil engineers that had to interact with welding and welding inspection type people. As for whatever reason, there always seems to be some kind of huge disconnect between the people who design the welds and those who make the welds. I think this has to do with the assumption that engineers have that welds are just made. I put it on the paper and then somebody makes it happen. They don't realize a lot of times that there's limitations with those welding processes and some processes work better or some work worse or some things you just can't do that you can do on paper. Um, this presentation is definitely not designed to turn you into a welder or some kind of uber guru on the subject matter of welding engineering. Hopefully this presentation will help expand your knowledge base on the subject of welding and help with any unfortunate encounters you have with welding personnel or welding engineers. Acknowledgements, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, um, they've got a course introduction to welding technology and card codes courses um, there's the website if you want to track that one down can teach public domain education and reference library can do technology can do stands for canada deuterium uranium also a couple of u.s army tech manuals i've um, used those as reference um, sources here it's all open uh, open source I guess or public domain so I dip into those uh, sources on a regular basis. My name is Gary Pace. I'm a professional engineer in CWI. I work for Texas Metallum Welding Engineering which is me um, out of Katy, Texas. Um, there's my email address and my website. If you have any questions or have a need for welding engineering consulting or want to chat about the uh, presentation there's my contact info air carbon arc gouging is a method of cutting or gouging material metal by melting it with a with the heat of an electric arc and then blowing it away with the molten metal with a high velocity jet of compressed air the flow of compressed air is parallel and external to the carbon electrode because, it's, because this process does not depend upon oxidation of the metal, air carbon arc gouging is very effective in cutting non-ferrous metals. So that's the main difference between this and using a blowtorch. And I say blowtorch, oxyacetylene or some other oxy fuel rig to cut um, carbon steel. Using air carbon arc gouging, you can cut into stainless steels and other materials that you can't use oxyacetylene or oxy fuel for. Because oxyacetylene welding, oxy fuel welding, just a common ox oxyacetylene torch, it uses, it heats the metal up and then hits it with oxygen. The oxygen is, it's kind of blowing stuff out of the way, but it's causing oxidation. You're actually burning things. This is melting the metal into a liquid and then blasting it out of there with a high velocity jet of air. And the jet of air runs parallel and kind of behind the arc. So it just blasts it, which as I said about the poison arrows and smoke and fire, that's where she's coming from. So something to keep in mind that there is a difference between air carbon arc gouging and oxy fuel cutting. In this picture you can see some electrodes and then an air, a guy actually doing some gouging with a, a air carbon arc gouging electrode holder. Um, 
this is used to clamp the carbon graphite electrode in such a position that the air is emitted from the orifices in the gun nozzle and it's directed parallel to the electrode. The air then strikes the molten metal immediately behind the arc. The gun also contains an air control valve and the cable that carries both the current and the air. This cable is connected to a DC welding machine delivering reverse polarity current and also to a source of compressed air. The carbon electrodes used for this cutting process are copper coated to increase their life, provide a uniform cut, and increase their current carrying capacity. This also reduces the radiated heat. The, the carbon electrodes as we see them here come in a number of different sizes, shapes. You can get flat ones, round ones, big ones. It depends on what you're cutting. And if you have issues where you need to figure out what you need, there's a salesman out there that will certainly assist you in finding what you need and getting you that product for a price. So it's the way the capitalist system works. I wasn't meaning to be down on that, but just saying if you need help, there's somebody that is an expert on this. So, But be cognizant of the fact that you can use this for removing defects in pipe, plate, casting. In my short career, I've used it for chopping up haul truck boxes. If you needed to really gouge out a big chunk of metal, this is it. And then I've been involved in a foundry, um, repairing of casting defects. And they we'd buy these carbon arc electrodes by the box. I mean like the big box. Um, yeah, it wasn't just a onesie twosie. We'd go through these by the the pound, and it was it was a noisy, hot, smoky adventure. But you could you could gouge the guys that could gouge could gouge out holes the size of a football in a matter of no time. I mean, they could really move a lot of metal. So that we'd, if you had to grind that out, it'd take you a month of Sundays. But these guys could just chop it out and you know, half hour to a couple hours, just blast, and then they'd start rebuilding the casting. But anyways, if you need to move a lot of metal fast, this is, this is a good way to do it. Air carbon arc gouging is useful in many um, metalworking applications, such as metal shaping and other welding preparations. For gouging, you hold the electrode holder so the electrode slopes back from the direction of travel. The air blast is directed along the electrode towards the arc. The depth and contour of the groove are controlled by the electrode angle and travel speed. The width of the groove is governed by the diameter of the electrode. So what they're saying though is this is very useful for um, if you need to remove a lot of metal in a hurry. I used to work at a foundry in a previous universe. And this was the method of choice for removing defective metal from castings and then replacing it with weld metal. And we would buy these electrodes by the pound, as I've said previously. But you need to, uh, you need to be cognizant that the people that are good at with an air carbon arc gouging rig are people that have practiced. Some people have the knack, some don't. Um, some people are the Michael Jordan of this, some people are not. So before you go turn somebody loose with a air arc to turn the rookie welder loose and go have him, you know, chop something up, you better make sure that he has an understanding of what he's got in his hand. It doesn't hurt to, um, it's like with a chainsaw. You don't just send somebody out with a chainsaw. You probably want to give them a little instruction because it's a, it can be a weapon of mass destruction, and that's what this thing can be. You can you can create a lot of havoc with an air carbon arc gouging rig. So just be cognizant of that if you ever run across a situation and tell them just go do it. Eh, might want to get a piece of scrap metal or something and practice prior to to going live. Might want to have a little rehearsal before the first show. Just saying. Like we said before, to make a cut, you hold the electrode holder with the electrode at the desired angle and strike an arc between the end of the electrode and the metal to be cut. The jet of compressed air, you hit the trigger, 
turns on the compressed air and after being depressed the trigger will will be turned on and you'll have a continuous flow of air um, the air jets are directed immediately behind the point of the arc and the electrode is moved toward the molten metal move forward and the molten metal is blown away by the air jets speed of travel is determined by the electrode size type of metal being cut amperage settings and air pressure used proper speed of travel produces a good clean cut and is recognized by a smooth hissing sound air carbon arc gouging summary um, there's not a lot to this process it's not like gas metal arc welding where you've got four different transfer modes this is pretty much brute force and stupidity carbon cover it with copper a lot of amperage start chopping turn on some um, compressed air to blast the liquid metal out of there um, need to be cognizant that there are safety precautions with this process that need to be followed you're using um, a piece of equipment and you're turning a sizable volume of metal into a liquid and then you're blasting it out of there with compressed air so combustibles and people and anything that you don't want covered in chunks of liquid metal you need to cover up or move or take the appropriate precautions um, it melts the metal with the heat of an electric arc once again blows the molten metal away high velocity jet of compressed air which is good but it can be bad like I said safety precautions safety first um, no oxidation of the metal this is very effective in cutting non-ferrous metals such as um, stainless steels or nickel alloys excessive noise you, your guys are probably gonna have to wear a single if not double hearing protection this is um, something that needs to be looked at I'm not an OSH specialist but you probably want to talk to your your safety and health representatives to see what the requirements are for um, hearing protection molten metal anytime there's molten metal there's a chance that something can go sideways south or bad on you so take the appropriate safety precautions and but this is a good way to move a lot of metal in a hurry if you need to chop something out or like I said if you're removing bad metal from a casting and you need an excavation the size of a football this is your process a lot more uh, efficient than using a grinder when I give this presentation live this is the point where I usually ask if anybody's got any questions but seeing how this is a presentation that's on the internet you don't get that so if you've got any questions send me an email if you have any need for a welding engineer same contact information my website is texasweldingengineering.com my name is Gary Pace occasionally I get a question in regards to where I went to school or where I got my welding engineering degree I went to Montana Tech in Butte Montana it's a four-year ABAT accredited welding engineering school small class sizes good um, faculty good value for your money if you're interested in welding engineering and you want to check out the state of Montana um, Montana Tech's a good place to visit go to school <laughs>